What's going on guys? This is Sky Vault, and welcome to the second episode in this Raylib tutorial series. So today, what we're going to be covering is drawing primitives. So primitives are essentially shapes that you can draw in your game. Oftentimes, when we're building a game, we don't have all the art done yet. We don't have it, all the uh, graphics done yet, like sprites and stuff. But we still want to kind of create the demo, create the game. So in place of finished sprites and textures and stuff like that, we can use things like rectangles or circles to represent that. Or, optionally, you can, you, you can write your entire game just using uh, primitive shapes like triangles, rectangles, and stuff like that. So, Raylib comes packed full with a ton of primitive shape functions. And today we're going to be covering most of them, not all of them. Um, again, uh, you can see a huge reference of every single function that you can call in Raylib using the Raylib cheat sheet. And I'll link to that in the description below. But yeah, let's get started. So the first one I want to show you is ar arguably one of the most uh, important, and that is drawing a rectangle on the screen. So the function is just called draw rectangle, and the arguments to this function uh, are the x and y coordinates, and then the width and height. So first, let's talk about the coordinate system. So in Raylib, the coordinate system 0, 0 uh, starts up in the top left corner right here, and every single pixel down, uh, we add. So uh, we say, you know, if, let's say we want to draw a rectangle right here uh, at, let's say, 100 pixels, 100 pixels, then we would go down 100 pixels, then we would go uh, right 100 pixels, and that's how we plot it. So it starts up at the top right corner, and then it adds as we go down to, or top left corner, and then it adds as we go to the bottom right. So let's, uh, let's place our re uh, rectangle at 100, 100. So let's do 100, 100, so that's the X and Y. And now we want to do the width and the height of the rectangle. So let's make it something like 100 pixels wide and then 300 pixels tall. So it's going to be a really tall rectangle. And then the, uh, the, the fifth parameter is going to be the color. And let's draw it red. Real quick, I would just like, like to mention, this is uh, just a tiny little um, Raylib project right here. I set the width and the height, I create a window, set the target FPS, and then we just do a loop. And you have to make all of your draw calls between begin drawing and end drawing. So let's run it, and now we can see a large red rectangle. So there's several other uh, overloads for this draw rectangle function. Essentially an overload is the same function, it does the exact same thing, but with different arguments that you can pass in. So if we want to draw a rectangle using uh, vector coordinates, or vector structures, we would use a function called draw rectangle v. And then in here we can pass in our, ve uh, our vectors. So let's create a rectangle that at coordinate 300 and maybe 200 in the x. And then the next parameter is another vector 2, which represents our width and height. And a vector 2 is just a grouping of two uh, floats, two uh, floating point numbers. So it, it's just a uh, vector 2 uh, structure. So let's make it um, let's make it a skinny or a really wide but not very tall rectangle. So let's make it 100 pixels wide and then 30 pixels tall. And then we're going to make this blue. Alright, let's run it. And now we can see this blue rectangle on the screen. Alright. So, uh, another one that you can draw is, uh, or use, is draw rectangle rec. And basically this takes in two parameters. A rectangle struct and then a color. So a rectangle is just defined like this and then we give it the, uh, the coordinates that we want. So let's just make it at uh, 200, 200, and let's give it a width and height of like 40 and like 400. Actually, let's make it 400 and 400. And then let's give it the color green. And we'll see, now we have a giant green rectangle. Actually, that covers up our blue rectangle. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it 100 by 100. There we go. Now we have a nice green rectangle right here. Alright, so let's say you want to draw a rectangle that is rotated. So to do that, there's another function called draw rectangle pro and draw rectangle pro gives us two more parameters that we can work with so it is the exact same uh, as the uh, draw rectangle rec function where the first parameter is a rectangle that we want to draw and let's actually get rid of this right here comment that out the next parameter right here is the origin and we'll talk about the origin in a little bit for now we're just going to make it a vector 2 and the x and y coordinate of that vector 2 is going to be 0 0 the next parameter here is the rotation, and this rotation is in degrees, and we're going to set this to zero, and then we're going to just uh, set the color to green. So now if we run this, we'll see that we have the exact same thing we had before with the green rectangle, but now we can try rotating. 
So let's try rotating this rectangle by 45 degrees. Let's save that. And now we have a rotated rectangle at 45 degrees. And actually, real quick, I'm going to do, uh, do something that will animate this rectangle. So I'll make a static float rotation. Initialize it to 0. Actually, let's do it like this, so it's more like C. And down here, we're going to say rotation plus equals 0.5F. So we're just creating a variable and uh, adding uh, half a degree every single frame. And then right here, we're going to pass in rotation. All right. Let me set wrap so you can see the, uh, the, all the arguments. So now we can see that this uh, rotated rectangle is animating. But there's one catch here. You'll notice that this rectangle is rotating about the top le uh, left corner, which you might not want. Uh, so to actually define where the, uh, the origin, where the rectangle rotates, that is where this origin value right here comes from. So if we want the rectangle to rotate about the center, we have to give it uh, the center coordinates uh, relative to the top left. So our rectangle is 100 pixels by 100 pixels, 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. So we want to get half that so that we rotate around the center. So we're going to give it a 50 pixels by 50 pixels for the origin. Now if we run it, we'll see that the green rectangle rotates around the center. So there are many more shapes that we can draw besides just rectangles. So one of the one important shape is let's draw a, a, a circle. So the first parameter of a circle is going to be the x-coordinate. So let's make this at 400 and let's make this at 300 in the x. This uh, the third parameter is the radius. So uh, if you uh, we all know that the radius is half the uh, the uh, half the width of a circle. So we're going to make this 64, meaning our entire cir circle is going to be 128 pixels wide. The next one is um, the next parameter is the color, and I'm going to make it orange. So now we have this orange circle right here in the middle, uh, near the middle. And of course, there's the other, uh, there's some other draw circle functions that take in vectors and stuff like that. I'll have, I'll let you guys look that up yourself. Um, another function that's pretty useful is draw triangle. Now this one's a little bit trickier because the way uh, that we have to define this triangle is we have to give it the three points for the triangle. So we have the top point. Then we have the bottom left and then the bottom right, right? Or you can you can rotate them in any way. You can place them anywhere. But one catch is that we, they have to be in a clockwise fashion. So we have to define the top one first, the left, and then the right vector. So let, let's do that. So let's place the top one at... We're, we're just going to put this in the top left corner. So the first parameter is going to be the center. Uh, so let, let, if we're going to make a, uh, a triangle that is... Um, uh, that is... Uh, uh, just a regular triangle where it's uh, the middle point is halfway in between the uh, the two sides. Uh, we're gonna do um, that right here. So we're gonna make that at 50 and then zero. The next one is gonna be the bottom right. So we started right here. And now we're going to the bottom. Sorry, bottom left. Um, it might be right for you guys though. So that's gonna be zero in the x and then 100 in the y. And then now we're gonna do the bottom right. So that's gonna be 100 by 100. And then let's give it a color. Let's make it. I don't know. Let's make it uh, yellow. Alright, so now we should have a yellow triangle. That's actually really hard to see. Let me make it blue. There we go. So now we have a blue triangle at the top there. So there are, like I said, uh, a bunch more primitive drawing functions. There are functions for drawing a rectangle with a gradient color, which is pretty useful. There are functions for drawing actual polygons, and we'll be covering that in a few seconds. Real quick, before we move on, I forgot to mention that we can actually draw uh, rectangle, uh, rectangle lines. So if you don't want to fill the rectangle and you just want to draw lines, which is often useful if you want to draw like, uh, uh, like boundaries that the player can't pass through, uh, the function is called draw rectangle lines. And this is defined exactly like the, uh, the rectangle that was defined before. So let's just make the uh, a draw rectangle lines and just make it black. And um, there's actually another function. So like you can uh, like you can see right here, we have a rectangle, and it's just a you know line rectangle. But we can also uh, if we use the line rectangle ex, we can control the line thickness. So let's make it let's say 10 pixels thick. 
and we also have to use a, uh, a rectangle here, a rectangle strut. So let's do that. Rectangle, and let's surround all these with that, and now we can compile it, and now we have a rectangle with thick lines, 10 pixels thick. So this parameter right here is the thickness of that. Alright, so the last two functions I'm going to talk about is the draw poly and draw poly ex. So draw poly, like the name suggests, allows us to draw a polygon. So something like a triangle or a hexagon or a pentagon, you know, and we get to define how many sides it actually has. So let's actually draw out this function, or let's actually make the function call. So let's do draw poly. The first parameter is the center point of it. So it's going to be a vector 2. Um, and let's place it at 300, 300. This next parameter is how many sides. So, you know, a pentagon has five sides, a hexagon has six, an octagon has uh, eight. So this is where we define that. So let's make a hexagon, so six sides. The next one is going to be the radius. So I'm going to make it 200 pixels, uh, 200 pixel radius right here. And then this last parameter is the color. And we're going to make it blue, so I like blue. Um, oh, I must have missed a, a value. Oh, sorry. Before the color is the ro is a rotation. So if we want to rotate this, uh, this hexagon we can add that right here but we're not going to rotate it so we're going to leave it at 0.0 uh, 0. 0. so if we run this we'll see a big blue hexagon and that's exactly what we wanted so let's real quick write some simple code that we can use to basically visualize uh, this um, this uh, how many sides that we can do so I'm going to create two static variables normally we don't want to do um, static variables but that's okay for this demonstration right here we're going to say timer plus equals get frame time Get frame time is a function that returns the time between each or how long each frame took to render. So we're gonna say if timer is greater than 0.2f, then we're gonna set timer equal to zero, and then we're gonna increment size, so size plus plus. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna basically add one to size every 0.2 of a second. Um, and then we're gonna use size as a variable right here. We're gonna say size mod, let's say 12. So this is gonna go from zero up to 12 different sides. Um, now, uh, one thing to uh, consider is that if size is less than three, then we're not actually gonna, it, it, it's not, it's only gonna, you can only draw um, up to three sides, or down to three sides. Otherwise, you know, it's not a polygon because triangle has three sides and that's the smallest polygon that we can make. So let's actually run this and we can watch and see that uh, we go from a triangle to a, you know, all the way up to a square to, you know, uh, the pentagon, uh, yeah, pentagon and all that. So that is the draw poly function. It's pretty cool. Um, the next function I'm going to talk about is the draw poly ex, and this is a very powerful function. So let's get rid of all this right here. Draw poly ex. So what the first parameter of draw poly uh, ex, what it takes is a pointer, or you can it, it takes an, an array, an array of uh, of points. So we can actually define how our uh, shape is, uh, what shape that we want. And it can be any shape that we that we want. So let's create an array right here. Do a vector two array. Name these vertices. And let's get started defining a wacky shape. So the first, uh, I'm just gonna make it at the first point. And remember, this has to be in clockwise um, order. So we have to do you know it round like a clock. So uh, or reverse clockwise, counterclockwise. That's what it needs to be. Sorry. Um, okay, so let's put the first point at maybe like 30, 0. And let's do a second point at uh, 0x, 100y. And then let's maybe go over to 100, 120. And then let's go over 120. Let's go up, let's say. Let's go 50. And then let's go into 80. And then 20. Sure. So we have a shape that we defined here ourselves. Uh, since an array is basically just a pointer, it's just an address. We can pass it in right here. The next parameter is the, uh, is the, uh, I believe it's color. So let's do blue. And um, we're missing, well, let's look at the, uh, the cheat sheet. We're missing, uh, oh yeah, number points. Right, right. So since, it, since we're just passing in a pointer, um, it doesn't know how many points there actually are in the list. So to make sure that we don't, you know, write over memory that doesn't exist or whatever that we haven't allocated, we have to pass in how many points there are. So let's just do size of vertices. So the total number of bytes this array is divided by the size of a single element in the array. So we're going to do vector 2. Alright, now we can call this function 
and we can see this weird shape that we find up here. And this can be any shape that we want. Um, though I do believe that it has to be uh, convex, not concave. Concave being, uh, you know, it goes in on itself, uh, kind of like a cave. Uh, it kind of has to be a, uh, a rounded object. So, yeah, that was my, uh, that's the tutorial right here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys have fun, you know, making your games, drawing all these uh, cool shapes and all that. In the next episode, we're going to be covering how to draw uh, sprites and images and stuff like that. But yeah, I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Bye.